think he's going out to check it out now. I, I seen Dale was still out there, I thought. After taxes or what? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's a young lady I want to see. Hey there. year is not going to be any anything anyway though it would and then you know
advertise, but I mean, they, they advertise I think the at a minimum. Um, someone told Roxanne about a few months ago, but I haven't heard like from the city or anything. Yeah. She's just wanting to get a list of all the yeah. properties that we have on these that we have Yeah. 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 Well, Connie will find the deal. I'm going to order a day. We have a request for purse. Yeah. I, I, Roxanne told me, but I haven't heard anything from the city at all about it. But, um, so it's um whoever's it on the board down there. Well, I think she's asking if we would lease any of our own properties. Can't. Land or buildings are we talking about? Yeah. We don't have any buildings. Yeah. Right? But no. Um, so if you think of it tomorrow, I don't know I why can, they. I, I don't know why they said. Give me a shout and I'm go Because I don't have a list, but I. But it's it's Connie I'll and Grant Hughes. What's that? Okay. Uh huh. No, you still have a few other things to do. I think they just keep up time. I think it's wrong to move. Because you got to go on the media. There's a lot of people that Friday night. Yeah, Friday night's Friday. Yeah, Thursday night. It's no fun. So yeah, Thursday night. 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 Thursday yeah, I won't, I won't have rumors. Okay. I didn't know if it was true or not. I, she told me to my face last Thursday. Or no. Okay. Last week sometime <laughs> that it was going to Friday. Yeah, because they'll file, they'll file a 
I can file a complaint with them. Right. Am I right? Right. Because they come in. Right. So the only other thing, if, if, if they haven't gotten back to you by the time they have back really good well, and you're well, I'm gone, then. You know, I gave him your name. I, don't, I know. He told me four yeah. times. Yeah. How do you have to have him name three times? He told me. Okay. That's the strangest thing. Um, we do also have to take the area map revolution because the area map revolution because it's we kind of just looks nice. I don't think we can make it. There's no other they, they tore that one house down where the parking lot is. All right, right. Well, what I'm saying is, I don't think they ever got a grant. See what I mean? I mean, it has to be. Yeah, the road I think that's going to be too broad. And I talked to Mike about it. He just agrees with me. But I have a call and um, I have a call when I get back with this. I mean, I know they're jumping at the bit though. So. Claims. Okay. Okay. Looks perfect. What was that? What's going on, Tim? Oh, no. Yeah. What? Yes, I did. Behind Kroger. Mm-hmm. Seventeen. I like the way you broke it down and also well, yeah. came back around it's to it. part of our mortgage. How do you do it? Break it down and come back around. Yeah, we got to say on what those are. We, as a result. Yeah, I mean, we have, you, I mean, they would have to bring in front of all the proper boards in order to, you know, stay in the room. I'm just saying, they shouldn't be going to ask for the outstanding. I don't think it wasn't wrong for four <laughs> this is draft. Right, right. I mean, the development so agreement in the mortgage. I don't know, I had surgery today, so. Yeah. 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 I don't know that we can oh, find think, anything. Like I think that. all that the, the, the 500s from St. Clair, Euphemia, Martin Luther King are all, all of them have been praise value and RFPs. Because everybody gets mixed up all the numbers all the time, so I went just went through them all, all like five or six here, and they're all good. Anything in there? I think at the site they, they just put all the crap in front of the just found out we don't own that property they behind you know, there's somebody's dumping the asphalt place. digging dirt out there I think Myron that's what Mark said but I'm sure he will he's giving it to him 99 3 6 9 hammer yeah counts you see it first yeah, like this morning is that turned across the road before me so I don't know the Linkmar redevelopment never did okay Linkmar to get that property yeah that's what they said I mean I don't know either I've been in here but maybe before that like you said Call the February 9th Martinsburg Redevelopment Commission meeting to order. Roll call, please. Gray and Hughes. Here. Mike Lawrence. Here. Tom Rogers. Here. Tony Abbott. Here. Donnie Bryant. Here. Aaron Cook. Here. Matt Myers is absent. And Attorney Leslie Votaw. Here. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes of the previous meetings? And there was two previous meetings in the packet. January the 12th and January the 26th. Yep, there's Are there any corrections or anything? Do we have an approval? That's so moved. Both sets of minutes? Second. The first and the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Our next regular meeting will be March the 9th. Five o'clock. Do also have one announcement. Um, there is a report due to the mayor uh, March 15th um, of all of our activities in 2014. That's in their Indiana Code 367 um, That goes to the mayor, and then also there's a copy to the uh, DGLF. Um, is that something you need help preparing, or? Pretty much, we gather up all the past information. Okay. Used to be the one that was submitted uh, July 1st, right, Connie? They moved it to March, and then we have one in October. But yeah, I just wanted to, I uh, reviewing the statute today, and 
just want a reminder that that's next month, so. We'll move on to the financial report. Uh, as of January the 30th, there was $2,063,640.04 Tim Jensen, Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. So uh, tonight, <clears throat> um, this may be the last time I'm in front of you guys for this project. We can all hope, I think, um, that this will be the last time. But I, I did want to come back, and uh, after I was here last month, and, and there was some discussion, and um, we've been working on our internal audit for this project, and I wanted to share with you guys some of the numbers, but before I do that, um, let me say from, from the Veritas Group as the president of our company, it's a, it's a new company, it's a startup company, as it started in 2011, uh, this project has been a big project for us, so I want to say thank you to the, the Lawrenceburg Redevelopment Commission, to the City Council. Um, to the attorney and to Connie, who we've spent hours with, um, David and I have, as well as Grant and Mario and Carl in the field, and of course Mike and the rest of the city staff. Um, it's it's been a it's been a challenge at times, of course, as we all know. Um, we've disagreed with some of you on this board at times of, of what the process should or shouldn't be. Um, I'm not here to ask for any money tonight. That's not why I'm up here. Okay, um, I'm simply here to to say thank you and tell you a little bit more about um, the service that we provided throughout the project. And I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. Um, but I think the biggest takeaway I want you to hear is, is that we're grateful um, to this board and the Board of Public Works and the Mayor's Office, both Mayor Cunningham and Mayor Carr, uh, for allowing a, a new startup company who they trusted us. And I know a lot of that had to do with uh, Mario's trust in me um, to help guide the city through this project. And some of you were there at the very beginning of this as we kind of walked through this. And some of you are new. So um, we were hired by the city in 2011 to represent the city's interest. That's what my company does. We were formed specifically to represent public and private entities both in complex projects. And we all agree, I think, that this is a fairly complex project. It's the single largest project that the city's ever done, especially in a vertical construction type environment. Um, our, our firm has logged over 5,000 man hours um, through the, the course of, of this project, which, um, and it, that's about 38 months worth of stuff from 2011 through the end of last year, 2014. Um, so, and as you guys know, we, we have not billed or charged or done anything for, um, for the work that we've continued to do as we close out the project with Mario here. Because we told you in December that that was going to be the last ask that we had of, of the Redevelopment Commission. So um, with that, just a couple of the successes that came out of the project in general, um, not before we even get to the, the details of the numbers. And, and I will tell you that all of this stuff that I'm going to give you tonight, we're going to memorialize into an official letter and, and stat sheet so that you guys have it, so that you can talk about the success of the project um, that's down the street here. But we have currently zero lawsuits from contractors on this, this project. Um, and a $55 million project of this many contracts, 28 different um, entities, now we're up to 32 with some of the smaller stuff, to not have one of those contractors file suit against the city. And while we've threatened, there's been some threats, but we've negotiated these things out with both Schindler and Triton and different people. Um, to have that at the end of a project, with a project like this, um, is pretty remarkable. And I think that's a testament to um, the whole construction team as a whole and, and your legal counsel as, as we worked through all the issues and dealt with each one of these individual contractors. Um, so have zero lawsuits from the contractors. Of course you guys know that we're still helping your staff pursue um, the design errors and omission stuff that we talked about last week or last month that you guys approved that and I know uh, Ms. Votal has been working on that response and back and forth with Structure Point and their insurance company and maybe I appear before you again to explain some of that um, as that goes. But I kind of consider this, you know, the last meeting as far as me updating you on, on this project. As you guys all know, it opened in December. Um, they, they've had several different events there. We've heard lots of good things from them about the events. They know that, but we all knew at the beginning there was a three-year ramp-up period to this project. We all know that it's going to be slow to start. Um, they said that from the very beginning. Their, their pro forma has said from the very first days that this is going to take three years for us to be profitable or we expect to be profitable in the third year is what they told us. Which is why some of you remember the, the project agreement that was negotiated early on and we worked on those and I think it's coming up again tonight, the tax abatements in the, in the discussion tonight that I think Ms. Votal is going to talk about. And we, uh, you know, there's all, all kinds of different things that the city put up to make this project happen. 
um, to go through a couple of, of kind of the, the numbers that, that are there. Um, so we have reviewed 39 pay applications from Messer, you know, totaling about $47 million. Uh, we expect number 40 to come next week. Um, each one of these takes significant time to go through to make sure that the city is paying exactly what they're, um, what they're getting, right? Um, so we have engineered, and through our, our leadership, I guess, if you want to call it that, of the design team and the construction team, um, Structure Point, we had Structure Point prepare 130 proposal requests throughout the project. So any change order that was not in the contract documents that was thought to be outside of the contract documents was documented by the design team with what we call a proposal request or a PR. We brought several of those to you over time. 95 of those were approved, 20 were approved and noted as part of potential E&O insurance, and then 15 of those were outright rejected. Um, we also reviewed 511 external change orders uh, that were presented originally to Messer and then to us, and then of course those going on to Mario and Grant for, for final signature. Um, I'm not going to break down all of those, but uh, some of those were related to the E&O claim, which we're still discussing. Um, we rejected um, $678,429 of, of submitted claims by contractors. We negotiated another $678,000 down off of contracts, off of change orders that were submitted. And then, of course, we talked about this extended general conditions claim. And we've, we've brought to you guys for all the different resolution there. The original extended general conditions claim alone was submitted to the city at $1.4 million, and I'm using round numbers here. Um, and through the teams and Messer and ourselves and, of course, Mario and Grant meeting with Triton and several other contractors, that total claim issue was brought down to 500000 So that was a $900,000 um, negotiated savings right there. So I guess the long story short, um, we are showing a savings, uh, not that this wouldn't have been done um, without us here by any means, uh, but I think we did help facilitate, and I hope your city staff has, has realized some value that we've brought to the table as a firm, uh, but we negotiated $3.2 million in savings, at least, um, that we've calculated to date for our internal audit. I know there's been some talk publicly um, on Facebook and other places about our fee and what we've charged the city over the last three years. Um, we believe we've charged the city a fair fee for a, a fair rate. Um, it's what we would normally charge. It's actually below what we charge in the, in the private market. So we do offer a nonprofit rate, which goes to all municipalities and any other nonprofit entities, which the city has um, utilized over the last three years. Total cost for our contract, and I'm going to say it publicly, over the last three years has been $697,000 over the last 38 months. It's about a 1.3 cost for about a 6% savings in, in the direction that we um, helped the city in, in this. And again, this doesn't count all the, the countless hours that staff or other people would have had to spend had they done all this work internally for the city. Um, overall, again, we're, we're really proud to be a part of the project down the street. And I know some of you are really proud to be a part of the project down the street. Um, I stand before this board tonight because I think sometimes, and I, I, get to, I get the privilege, and this is something that maybe not everybody does, but I get the privilege to work around the state. So I, I've worked uh, here in Lawrenceburg and Clarksville and South Bend and Whiting and Indianapolis and uh, met with mayors and redevelopment commissions all over the state. And this is how projects are getting done everywhere. It's by public-private partnerships. It's by commissions and city councils and people stepping up and, and filling that gap when it comes to the developers because they know that at the end of the day that's how it happens um, in, in most cases and it does not all cases not all cases but certainly on the big investments or big changes the city wants to see this is how projects are getting done all over the state and we step in and help you know we're, we're working with the town of Fishers now on some stuff we're working with the town of Speedway on some things and and to, to continually and Avon now and the redevelopment commission so to continue to see value in the service that we provide because we specifically come along the side of the owner and represent the project owner and help explain difficult concepts and help navigate through some of the financial barriers and help solve some of the construction problems. Um, I think we have, I think we all have, when I say we, I mean the citizens of Lawrenceburg, the Redevelopment Commission, the City of Lawrenceburg, the city staff have a, have a very nice project at the end of the street that you guys can all be proud of. Um, I know there's some people on this board and some people in the room probably that have always been against the project. Um, but I just want to encourage the city that it's here, 
and it needs to be a success for the city to be a success and there's a lot of work to do around this and we've talked internally with your staff and not that we're angling for more work it, it, the fact is is that there's work to be done the, the biggest issue that we hear from Hollywood when we talk to them every week is that the event was great but the people walked out and had no place to go right so they walk out into the streets and there's maybe one bar or one one restaurant or something open and I know you guys are working on those things I'm just telling you what we hear and you know, so you guys can make plans to prepare as the redevelopment commission so as the redevelopment commission you guys have a, a unique ability that the city council doesn't necessarily have and you have a responsibility in many people's opinion um, to guide and shape the direction and the atmosphere of the development in this town and whatever that looks like you know you guys are, you have appointed it from different people from the mayor's office and from, from city council <laughs> Um, but I just encourage you all, you've got a great project down the street that can prove to be a catalyst if you guys embrace it, um, pick it up, move on, and, and see what else can happen around it. And, and work with your partner in Hollywood that now owns it, um, that, that they can be a success. And I know you guys, the mayor's office has done some things to do that. Um, so that's really all I have to say. Again, I want to say thank you to this board, this commission, um, to the people in this room. I know Paul and, and several of you and, and these guys behind us have, have been big supporters. Um, but overall, we hope, we sincerely hope that you guys consider us at least professionals, whether you agree with us all the time or not. We try and conduct ourselves professionally. Connie, I, I certainly hope that you found David and I a pleasure to work with. We, we try to be. Um, and Mario and everybody else that we've dealt with throughout the way. But again, thank you um, again for the experience. And uh, that's really all I have tonight. So thank you guys. Thank you. Hey, Tim, you did a great job. Thank you. Great job, Tim. <coughs> Leslie Voto, RFPs for 517 Euphemia Street. You know if we got any, um, was there any submittals on this one? I called and there were none. Okay. Um, it did go in twice uh, since we had the short period of time. Uh, I went in on these, I guess, whatever, last Tuesday. No, I, I have one of them. The other one's still sitting at my table, so <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, at any rate, it was. Um, Two, three, and two, five. Sorry. I don't know if the board has anything else on this. I just want to that was due for any kind of request for proposal. Property. We received an offer from Mr. Seymour. <coughs> That's correct. 517 Euphemia. What would the board like to do since there was no offers that came in? <coughs> Make a motion we sell it to Mr. Seymour. That was for the ten dollar offer, I believe, but is that, that correct or not? I have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'm second. First and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. I do have the real estate purchase contract. Um that's one I previously sent to you. Um I think it was in your packets last time. How many houses are you gonna put on that? We we put in here the main part of this says build a residential structure on said property in accordance with the proposal submitted to the seller on or about January 12th, 2015, which would have just been what you proposed in, in the meeting. Um, we do have your language that you guys like to put in there. The failure to commence the construction with 108, within 180 days and complete within 24 months may result in legal action, including reasonable attorney fees and the seller reserves a first option to purchase the property at no more than the purchase price. If it's not building according to this, the proposal, um, so uh, this this originally this still is not going to be part of the loan program, correct? Okay, um, Mr. And you can tell them if you'd like to, but I do know Mr. Seymour was wanting to move on this one. Um, the other loan, um, the housing loan, um, we're still reviewing, um, but this. This particular property was not going to be included in that plan, that pilot program. So. And with just yeah, I mean, well, just with the payment of ten dollars, really, there's not a whole lot to oh, to close other than um, we do search. the yeah. I don't believe he's he's conducting a title search. I think the Greens live there for 50, 60 years, so. Uh, that's I told him that that was up to him. It's basically as is, and there are no warranties as to the condition of the property. So, move on now. Leslie Hollywood Tax Um, in the 
develop, I'm sorry, the uh, project agreement. Uh, this was brought up to me at the closing um, by Scott Noe with Hollywood. Um, the project ag agreement in 2011 stated, and you asked me if I had a copy of it, There, I do have this, uh, what that paragraph says. And it, uh, subject to the receipt of applicable municipal approvals, Penn National's compliance with all applicable legal requirements and the consummation of the closing, the project shall receive a three-year tax abatement for all real property improvements constructed on the property as part of the proje project, commencing on the date of closing. Um, if the tax abatement is not otherwise provided by the city, Penn National shall have the right to an offset or credit against any sum due the Redevelopment Commission with respect to the project in an amount equal to the tax abatement benefit anticipated under Section 703. Um, at the time, in 2011, the, statutor the statute, which is Indiana Code 6.1.1, 12.1, 4, the required tax abatement was a, um, uh, a lack of a better term, a staggered term, as in year one was 100% tax abatement. The statutory schedule was 100% in year one, 66% in year two, and 33% in year three. Um, because there was no other option at the time, that was what the statutory language said. They didn't actually put specify those percentages um, in the project document. Um, since that time, in 13, the legisla uh, Indiana legislature removed all the references to the statutory percentage schedule for abatement and authorized local units of government to approve a scale per project. Um, so, as the law stands now, the city council, with a recommendation from redevelopment could approve a three-year 100% tax abatement if that's if that's what the city wants to do um, so it's kind of a quandary um, when I did talk with with um, mr. Jensen about it um, and I, reviewing the, the huge event center file I did come across some documentation of, of uh, Umball did a study and also um, uh, ice Miller Presented because uh, I believe Lisa Lee was involved in setting up the TIF district. Um, so she she chimed in too on her. Uh, and, and at the time, like I said, there was no other way to to structure the tax abatement. Um, now, when I did sit with um, Mr. Nelly and Mr. Saunders at the closing, they assumed that it was 100% for three years. And that's because the, you know, the statute did change in 13. I wasn't aware of the statute change. Why wouldn't they think that it would be what it was in 2011? Right. Um, that's what I always assumed, that it would be the staggered. Um, like I said, I didn't even know about the change in the, in the legislation in 13. So, um, Tell me those numbers again. 66. It's 100 and then 66 <coughs> and 33. And see what Umball did it's when they brought it to this redevelopment commission and also to, to city council, they um, they they put it out as a 10 year, as a five year, and as a three year. And city council at the time agreed only to the three year. So um, this these forms, which is a, it's called a statement of benefits form that has to be filed with the um, Indiana. Uh, well, I guess it actually goes to our assessor's office. Um, they have to have that no later than May 10th. So any action by our boards has to be done in order for those, those forms have to come in front of um, city council and the mayor actually would sign it um, in order to, for them to get it in by the May 10th deadline. So I don't know that it... recommendation to the council. Right. I really don't know if you want to proceed on any uh, d decision tonight. Um, I went ahead as soon as I knew that it was a, an issue. I brought it to you all. Um, obviously, we are going to have to make a decision at some point, but um, I don't necessarily, you know, that's not something we necessarily have to do tonight. We've got two choices, 100% or step down. Well, and, and well, one of the things I do want to point out too um, was, you know, that this, because this is already 
all any of the taxes paid on the improvements will become t the TIF money. And they're already not going to be available to other taxing units. Um, so, you know, the, the units won't see any increase in assessed value, whether the abatement's provided in a sliding scale, you know, the 10, the 66, the 33, or at 100%. But this unit needs to bring in the income. It wants to revitalize. Wants an entertainment district, so it better be looking at bringing in revenue. Mm -hmm. That's true. If what is your legal opinion? If this was signed in 2011, the statute stated the 100 percent, 66 percent, 33 percent. 13, they change it to it's up to the entity. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you think that 2011 I think a court, language stands. I think a court. I mean, I think a court could could decide either way, but. You definitely have a stronger argument for the law that was <laughs> in effect at the time. Well, definitely, if it. you go with 2011, I don't see how they could even be an argument. Right. But if you go with less than that, then I can see on their behalf they could argue. Mm -hmm. But what would a judge say? Who knows? Right. Well, obviously, we don't want to get to a judge, but. <laughs> so, I mean, I would. Uh, my recommendation to the board at the maximum is what the law was in 2011. But I, I'm also going to recommend that we table this until the next meeting to give it a lot of thought. Something not to jump into, but at the most of what the law was in 2011. And then this board has to decide if they would want to make it less you know, and, and take that chance if, if they did protest it and want to go to court on it. You know, that would be up to the board recommend not going over that the law stayed in 2001. And what I can do, um, I can make sure that, that the law, um, the actual project agreement um, portion uh, paragraph plus, uh, you know, what 2011 said and what 2013 says and what our options are. I can I can make sure that I send out an email to you guys. So as I understand something you can review and no, they're research. looking out for their company's best interest. Our job is to look out for our citizens best interest. So that's okay. my recommendation to table it and at hundred percent we're talking about nine hundred and what, sixteen thousand somewhere along there. I believe that's that was that was well uh, based on a fifty million dollar project, so we're a little larger than that by ten percent, and um, so, but that was the numbers that Umball ran in two thousand ten. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, in the meantime, um, we will definitely look for all of the, the um, because like I said, Umball they could maybe even just forward it to me again. I know they did a study on it. Okay. I have it. Want to make a motion? Well, I'd make a motion to table it in the next meeting. Have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. First and a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, excuse me. Leslie, could we get sort of like a summary of mm -hmm. everything you just said? Yes. So can we can go over it before next meeting? Yes, I definitely. I'll, I'll send an email out to you and not just give it to you in your packets. Okay. And I think all I have right. everybody's email. Yep, that's all I have on that move on the grant owner occupied aging in place program thank you chairman um, something that's come across my desk is an aging in place grant um, it's uh, you can if we looks like we'll qualify but we'll see what our public interest is in this but um, the essence of the grants about three hundred fifty thousand dollars that we have to match ten percent um, it's a uh, program which is improvements to owner occupied homes within the city limits of Lawrenceburg. Those could be electrical upgrades, heating, cooling, and plumbing, roofs, windows and doors, lead-based paint hazards, and home modifications, which would could be um, ramps, bathroom upgrade for safety, door widening for wheelchairs, kitchen modification, improved lighting. Um, the grant is 15000 to the um, homeowner. It is forgivable after three years. If they stay in the location for three years, it's forgivable. And um, the, you can see there the eligibility requirements, 55 years of age, has to be an owner-occupied home. Uh, the, 
let's see, contract sales are not eligible, the home must be insured, uh, the home must need uh, be in need of modifications. It also gives you an income level um, for the person per household uh, from one person at 38,400 to five people at 59,200. Um, don't know where this is going to go just yet because I'm just going to take it to council and see how council felt about it. But uh, I could see the redevelopment could have involvement in this funding or some type of approval uh, process. Uh, ARA has some experience with running it. I'm going to have them come down for the council meeting on Monday, on next Tuesday to talk it a little bit further, but I want to let you all know it was out there. Kind of get your read if y'all thought it was something we should pursue. So this is uh, funded through the city, no no state money? No, this would no, this is state money. Oh, this is state We had to put up 10%. So we got about 35000 to get maybe three fifty. But now what's going to happen after we meet with council, then we'd have to put out a notice, get people in here to talk go through the qualifications with them, see how much interest we got, and then you build your grant request be based on how many individuals you have and what type of improvements we're looking at. So the application doesn't go in until May or June. But I thought it was something I'd bring to you, see if you're what your interest was, and let you know that I was going to take it to council if you all concurred. We had something like this before. Uh, I don't think the council or redevelopment got to see rejected applications. Okay. And, and that's, that's where a lot of, you know, problem I see in it is. Okay. Since it's state funded, who makes the, the determination <clears throat> who gets it? Who, who gets, gets it? Who it's it's um, uh, the ARA, or? ARA makes those determinations and then how we interface with that is depend on what involvement we want to have with it because you got personal financials that come into play and a lot of other things but they could they could certainly prepare some type of spreadsheet for us like we do with the uh, like the grants from yeah. from the foundation and yeah yeah that, yeah that could be that could be done it's just so I just want to see and what your all's reaction you is and to look into further to it Council and see, but there'd be some type of involvement. I feel should, redevelopment should be involved some way in it. I mean, if it's funding it, I, I would think the funding would come through redevelopment. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Move on to old business, Leslie Durbin Platt. Um, we did uh, the motion from you guys went to the Board of Works. Correct me if I'm wrong, Board of Works members. Um, there was it was favorable as far as the fencing, correct? Is that right? Yes. Can you give us an update on, on Well, that? I think Mr. Bryan made the motion even to end the last week <coughs> to, mm -hmm. to let them the put the fencing up or how we were gonna place it. Okay. Um and then you also did a second motion to obtain appraisals from Pillar Group and, and Mr. Thomas. We uh, actually, Mr. Votal, uh, uh, Joe Votal is the one who called both of them, and they both were a little hesitant as far as the as is um, evaluation, just because what basically what they would be doing is looking at what the vacant land is minus what it would cost to remediate the, the place. So, just so you guys know that that's that's where they're coming from on it. I told them that I would let them know after tonight for sure. I mean, they're they're already we've already signed everything to to get those started. But I wanted to let you know, and I did um, ask Pillar because they're the more more expensive one. It was only going to be like a five hundred dollar difference between having two, you know, the two values plus or just one. So. Um, 
I didn't know. I, I wanted to just get clarification from you guys. Um, obviously, you don't want to have to pay for the as is if, if, if it's going to be. If, I mean, I understand why you wanted the as is, but they were questioning that. So that's why I wanted to bring it back to you guys. What were they questioning? Just because the as is is going to be negative. I mean, compared, it's going to be less. Whatever they whatever they come up for with the, with the vacant land. So with it removed, it's going to be the most. Right, right. So you know, and that like I said, there's only like a five hundred dollar difference between the two. I would like to see it is just to be able to show to them. This is what it is the way it sits. Right. It's worth more with it removed, and this is what you know. I'll keep it as is. Them. Like I said, they they were questioning. It's they had question. They had that us, question. So I want to make sure. So, you know, that way you're showing we're willing to give the most for it of the mm -hmm. two appraisals. And it's with it removed, and that's how. But, I mean, that's just my, my thought. But he can remove it a lot cheaper than we can. But that also shows by the two appraisals. That right, I understand. It's a per it's well, I'll, I'll go ahead and proceed as is then. I'd like, I, I mean, I'll go ahead and proceed as you guys already voted. Um, I told them to go ahead and start it, um, you know, because it, it didn't matter which way they, they proceeded as far as which, which way they did it first. So um, I will confirm with them that we, we do want both values then. Move on to Mike Clark, downtown redevelopment project. Include the area map and message. Mm -hmm. That often. Any other old well, let's, let's get an explanation real quick. So, we got people that were anticipating passing tonight. Um, part of it is uh, there are three different sections in our redevelopment code that this could fall under. Um, part of what I'm checking into is whether or not the whole down of downtown can be designated as a redevelopment project area. I don't think it can. Um, uh, but so we're, we're looking into that. Um, it may be that that because uh, we have we do have the legal description, the plat for just the downtown area and in it. Uh, but in reading the whole statute, um, and it just doesn't it doesn't seem that that we can do the whole of I mean, and I'm talking about the downtown area within the levy so Leslie what's the difference between the redevelopment plot plot and the historical downtown plot what's it seems like it's historical we can do about anything we want mm -hmm. so why are we even considering this uh, this yeah. map what what's the difference I mean you're right I mean as far as the only thing that that Hyatt Palma recommended to us was the recommendation was that we utilize the new statute under the ABC laws and um, do the downtown entertainment district I mean, that's their recommendation but you are right you are correct they as if you are in the historical district um, you can also get a liquor license. Uh, Mr. Rezzo, in fact, um, is in the process of doing so. Um, yeah, I just want everyone to understand <coughs> the downtown entertainment district, which is where we're trying to get to, has to be part of one of these certain areas. We have looked at the um, the historic district, the TIF district. There are several different things, but they do not, they have this area, but not this area that was determined by the committee on what they would like to have for the downtown entertainment district. And for it to be entirely located within and to get the area that they want, that's why we're having to go to this downtown because the historic district doesn't include the whole area. The TIF district doesn't include the whole area. That's why we're doing the 
redevelopment project area okay. which is a larger base area that may actually down the road give you guys opportunities for possibly grants or different things you know, in a larger area could we get those three maps historic historic sure uh, I'd like to see the overlay on the historic too before they actually pass this too. That would be helpful. I thought we made the whole inside of the levee historic. Uh, no. no. We no. didn't? On this entertainment district, now it gets passed and everything. Is that going to allow people to walk around outside with drinks? I can't answer that question. I, that I don't know. Well, because, I mean, that's one of my concerns. I think that the main thing is to open up the, the eligibility to obtain the liquor license in the downtown area. Um, also, it, it also opens up for some of our committees to actually try to get grants if it's in a certain district or area. I have, I have no problems with that at all. I just have a problem with drinking, walking around outside. That one I can't answer. I'm not, that I'm not aware up, of that. That may be set up within our own ordinance to allow that to yeah. happen within that area. Yeah, I think so too. Because I've never seen anything in the statute that, that says you can. You know, right. you know, there's nothing well, that in the Indiana uh, statute. And I mean, I've heard that it's supposed to be they want it most for family oriented. Well, if that's the case, <coughs> family oriented is not walking around with drinks in your hand. Right. So that's just my concern. Is that all? Yeah, I guess we just do a motion to table, or did you already? Because I already did. Do we have a motion to table? So moved. We have a first, do we have a second? Second. First and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mike, we got some more under old business. Uh, we're wanting a light, you know, to read downtown the revitalization committee has been meeting and trying to come up with some ideas. And one of them is we'd like to start right down here on the end of Walnut Street where you come into town. We'd like to put lights on that Lawrenceburg sign, lighten it up. It's just you, you can't see the thing at night or anything. Mario, we, we, got we we checked on that, Donnie, back when that thing was put up back. How long ago was that? Oh, um, oh, two. Oh, two. I think Mr. Rosa was the engineer, uh, placement engineer on that project. If you look at the lettering, they're on a certain degree, a, a bevel and angle, and pricing was outrageous in order to put lighting that was going to be somewhat attractive along with that iron structure. I mean, it was pretty costly back in 02 to try to light that up. What Mr. The, Davis, what, I think. What, yeah. <clears throat> One of the things that's going on uh, we, in our meeting this morning, the downtown partnership, talking about uh, this lighting we got for the buildings mm -hmm. up here on top, is try to do that up there. The other thing that came up, which I think uh, Bonnie will bring up, is changing the color of the letters. Gold. Uh, John Davis, uh, we've been looking into the lighting downtown, and the archway is one of those things that when you come down 50 and that, or at night, you can't see it. It's just completely black, black skies, black background. Uh, the recommendation for the sign companies is to go ahead and take those gold letters and put some kind of a reflective white on there. They would show up much better. And then the other thing is to take the two bands that are on there and highlight those with LED uh, flex flexible lights. Okay, okay. So that would be, and the and the one of the quotes we have right now is around around five thousand dollars, which seems to be pretty reasonable to do that project. So, Mario, I don't know how much that project was when they look back on it then, but we're not really looking to per se at this point look to light light the letters up. Although that lighting, the band of lighting, the flexible lighting could in fact uh, provide enough indirect light on the on the letters if we got something that was more reflective. So, it sounds like a pretty reasonable project to do, and it would also now kind of say hey we're open for business come on downtown and be more welcoming than <laughs> this black arch that we have in there now we can't see so are you asking this board for approval and funding or uh, not at this time uh, we, we want to get a secondary quote so we could present both quotes to you uh, we're also getting the quotes for the lighting on the top of the buildings uh, we've got one quote so far uh, I'd like to hold off giving you that number but it's basically to take down all those existing lights that we have up there which are currently falling off the bulbs are dropping out of the uh, cases 
Uh, we've got lines that are flipped up on top of the building, so it isn't very attractive right now. Those have been up there for about <coughs> 11 years, uh, so we're looking at replacing those. But right now, we're with incandescent, not as efficient. We want to go to like an LED system. Uh, these bulbs have about a 50,000 hour life on them, so they're uh, be pretty low maintenance. It's a lot heavier wiring than we have up there currently, which is more like Christmas lighting. Um, and we're getting quotes from two different sign companies that are local here, so we're hoping we'll be able to present that next time around and give you some actual quotes and ideas of the schematics of what they we're talking about. But there's no process taking the ones down have to be done first and then find out if we got any damage on the buildings, which I don't think there's much. But Are the, are the owners of the buildings going to put any money into this? Taking the lights down, putting new ones up? Well, some of the, some of the merchants have, have said that they were, they're willing to chip in some into the pot. So uh, we have that. We don't have commitments from all of them. Uh, so obviously some of the buildings, are the, we'd have to get the commitment also from the landlords too. But right now we have the lighting up there, so uh, I'm under, under understanding that there's an easement, utility easement going across the top of the building, which means we could, and I don't know if that's true or not. We've been, we, we've tried to look at back at in the title records, and I have not found anything. But uh, either way, we've got to do something because we've got lights hanging off the buildings. Not on our, I know. Okay. Well, the problem, I mean, the only problem that I see, and, you know, they've been up there for quite a while, but, um, and, and thank goodness nothing that's ever happened, but if we put, put them up as the city, or even the committee of the city, you know, where's the liability? Are we liable to, to the owners? Well, I, I mean, have that's to definitely have to, a question we need to <coughs> but I have to ask you a question. Where, where are we right now with them hanging off the, the walls? Are we not liable now? We are. Okay. So, so would it not be better to have an alternative? We need to consider this and going forward. Right. I mean, I don't know how we wouldn't be. I don't, I don't know of any utility easements. Now, are those? Does the building owners pay the utility for those, or are they hooked into? Uh, as it currently stands, that that the, they're right run directly off the uh, poles from the city. So the cities. But these are like four point watts versus the seven or eight that we're using now. Okay. So it would be a substantial savings. I think they're slight. Charged, aren't they? I don't believe they're. I don't think they're coming off the poles. Well, they're. <coughs> what, what did you? Because there's one. There's one coming off our pole, huh? Our utility director is in the audience. I'm gonna ask him to check on that. Yeah. No, unless he knows already. And a good place to start is behind our building because we see the wires <laughs> led down. I don't see it going through a meter, but. Owen Gloss, utility director. Uh, I have had several discussions with uh, people that are on that committee. They're looking at that lighting program. I've got some thoughts about that. I, I do have some concerns about uh, the implications of the to the utility as far as ownership and we've got historical buildings and, and those kinds of things. Uh, I don't know that th this is the setting to get into that. I've got some specific thoughts about how we can address those issues. But some of the things that are being brought up tonight, I, I have those same concerns. A lot of that need to go to the utility. I, I think that it would. I, that might, like I say, I don't know that this is the proper setting for it, but I do have some very specific thoughts about how to approach the issue. <coughs> some of the practices that are done in other places that have similar obstacles they're trying to overcome and how they've worked around those kinds of things. And so at that time, I would be prepared to talk about that. Thank you. And the committee also discussed, you know, making sure we get Carl and uh, Olin involved in this project to make sure that all the whatever's up there currently, we look at it, make sure that it still meets code. Um, we did get an answer on that. One said they were doing direct wiring, which means right now the ones we got to plug in, like a regular socket, would be removed for that particular quote. So that'd be a little bit better wiring, but again, it has to be checked out through Carl and whoever else wants to get involved in that to make that work or not. So. Either way, we still have the issue of the ones that are up there, and we're, we're, even if we don't move forward on this one, we still have got to figure out what we're going to do with the ones that are currently hanging from the buildings. Right. Because if that causes a fire, I don't know who they're going to start pointing the fingers at. Well, my question so all along. So we need to take care of it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. My question all along was about liability. I, I just couldn't see how we could get around not being responsible. I would and I think what we got up there right now, they've been up there so long, and they're dry rotted and everything else. We should we should probably be thinking about getting them down. Until we until we come up with something before. Yeah, if we're liable, I would think immediately, and then I would think about before they could do anything new. If, if the city was involved, there'd need to be a liability release from each property owner. That's what I said, Mark. I don't think the city put them up originally, did they? That was a, I think that was a Main Street. I was an involved Main Street at the time, but that was a Main Street project about 11 to 12 years ago. Uh, I have no idea 
how that was funded. I assume it came through Main Street or there was something in cooperation with the city. The mayor thought, kind of thought that too. Uh, as far as who they, they mentioned the name of a company who put it up. <coughs> it was an outside company. Hmm? Basil three phase three phase. Okay. Three. So we had somebody who had done it in the past, so I don't exactly know what that process was. Leslie, if there's something back in the records, you might be able to dig up. But we, quite frankly, don't have. responsible for taking them down and stuff if we don't know who. Who put them up? Well, I mean, I, I, mean, I do think, and that's mainstream. part of what Olin, Olin can address too. I mean, as far as if it is something that you know to get them down and, and get them off there now, yeah. I mean, that might be something that that our utility company could possibly do. I mean, it, it, it is a phased project because, like a lot of buildings downtown, uh, the soffits, the different materials are used between metal and wood and brick. Uh, there's probably going to be some repairs, quite frankly, because the the box gutter or whatever's up there now. It already needs repairs, so their paint's been peeling off of it, and some of them are rotting out. There's pieces that need to be replaced. So, but this it, this does is in phases. I mean, you're gonna have to go up there, take them down, see what damage is up there. Now, who's gonna pay for that uh, repair up there? That, that might be a good project for Main Street to chip in some money to have go up and paint and, and clean it up on the top of those buildings. Don't you think that we need to know who was behind it in the first place? Was it Main Street or was it City? No, it was Main Street. Oh, it was Main. Street. Yes. So, okay. Yes. I guess that would be Main responsibility to get taken down. That's good. Right? That's possible. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what happens. We do a project and uh, no one's sticking around to fall up on it. And that that occurs with a lot of projects, no matter who does them. That's why it's hard to be put in writing. As far as what? Yeah. If you're hanging stuff on other people's property, then it should be in writing with a liability <coughs> release and them saying it's okay to do. Uh, again. I, I, I'll, I'll refer to your legal counsel because, quite frankly, I don't know. I don't think any of us in this room really. Mario, do you aware of that? As far as what, who did what, and who signed what? And I don't really believe the city. I think that might have uh, information. Yeah. I'm not aware of the city's involvement. I don't think we took the lead on this one. <laughs> well, that's my point. That's my point. Is that we don't have to take the lead on this one. Well, that's my point. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be part of removing if, if the city had no involvement with the installment. Um, the project kind of evolved, okay? It started out as a winter wonderland project to, to light up the buildings for, for Christmas. And they looked so nice. Everybody wanted to leave it there. And I think we originally had some uh, winter wonderland money that paid for the lighting to go up there. And it was a company out of Marion Midwest Display put it up originally, okay? And then... Um, it was problematic. The, the issues have always been those clamps, you know, the UV rays and everything else just damages the clamps and they break, so we had sagging lights and everything. Then at that point in time, now originally, John Roberts was the Main Street director at the time, and I believe that he went through and had releases from all the property owners okay. in order to put that up. He had that originally. But you would have it? No. I don't know. Okay. The bill, his building, was, our building burned. Yeah. We may not have that. That's like 11 years ago. But then, after they developed problems, now this is my understanding, that the, the utilities came in, redid them, three-phase, I think they had three-phase, redo them, and then they put them on timers. Because a lot of them initially were kind of jerry-rigged, and they were definitely not safe. And so I believe the utility then later, and, and you'd have to ask Mel about that, but I think they came in, fixed them, made them safe, and put them on timers. And, and if they got releases or followed up, that I'm not aware of because I wasn't really involved with that part of it. But that's how it evolved. If you, if you get a chance and able to look through your records and see, that would be great if you have, if you have any of those on record. If you don't, just let me know. But yeah, we may very well not because of the fire. A lot of things were lost in that fire. Okay. And now, like I said, that was before my time. But I remember that John actually went around and had people sign releases. That was when it was the Winter Wonderland phase. And then, we, we know approximate time when I guess you're saying Mel decided to do this. Oh, I don't know that it was Mel's decision. I, I just well, know I mean, that. We need to, so we can sure. Find some minutes or something where this was discussed. <coughs> said to do what? Uh, that might be in the city records, but I know when, when Main Street moved over to High Street there, next to where we had that huge three building fire over there, they lost a historic desk that was in there from some courthouse. But the only thing they got out of there was a computer. And you can't really sign documents in a computer. So 
whatever was in there. Uh, but you can scan them in. Maybe they mm -hmm. scanned them. We're talking about John Roberts here. <laughs> okay, technology and stuff wasn't really around that. I mean, it is now, but it's not, not to the extent. So, <laughs> well, I mean, if you don't have them, files. just let me know. Um, well, we'll see we can, can look. I, I highly doubt that we probably have them, but I do remember a form, and I do remember him going around and getting everybody to sign off. Now, when the city came back, at, or the utilities came mm -hmm. back and redid them to make them safe and put them on the timers, I have no idea what they did with respect to releases or or. If that I, I really don't know I wasn't involved with that at all at that time other than to know that they were coming in making it safe putting it on timers but you do think the first part of it that was 11 to 12 years ago oh absolutely it was either um, I think our first winter wonderland was 2001 or something like that 2001 2002 I have to go back and remember so I think that was part of that first year what? Was it John or was it City? Okay, it might have been John. It might have been a joint project of of was Main Street. Street. Was it? Okay, that's that sounds about right when they maybe came back and did them. Especially the seven one. Yeah, that was about three three years or so after the initial installation. Yeah, Mel Mel seemed pretty sure there was a utility easement on both the top and the bottom of the building. But I had I went to Eubank Title and actually had them do some searches back on some of the records they have for buildings on High Street and Walnut. Yeah. Uh, cannot find anything with regards because it would typically be in the well, title I mean, search. So there's always a catch-all at the bottom that says subject to any and all easements or restrictions of record. But you know, I'm not sure what that means. So well, I know I know that it's because it's kind of broad statement. Yeah, that's it just is like, broad. Uh, so, you know, and maybe that's what he was, you know, relying on. But would that apply to utilities then as well? You think? I mean, usually you, when you talk about utilities, then you're talking about pipes and, and right. sewer and all that, right? You're not for structure, yeah. Yeah. Well, right. it, it could be a Allowing us to go on the property and to do what we need to do. But it seems we may have to go back to each of the property owners if we, because property owners and some of them are very much in favor of this to replace it to make downtown kind of attractive during night, the nighttime. Um, the sign company has said that they assume the liability for the installation and removal of those. Then they've got millions of dollars worth of insurance, so. Uh, they would they would take the liability from that standpoint to make sure the contract also stated that. But we still got to get the approval of, of the owners in the absence of an easement being up there. So this has been a long drawn out process to try to get to this point. It has, and I, I think I, I think no matter who or if we ever do do it, if something would happen and they would be afar, this city would be in the hot seat along with everybody else. Well, I. Uh, well, but there's liability right now. We've got those timers and boxes and lines leading up to the <coughs> pole. So, whether Main Street's involved in it, or we're in partnership on this thing. Some so at some point, we've got to figure out how we're going to take care of what we have up there, we even if we don't get to the point that we take put new ones up. I think we need to discuss it more at <coughs> so. our meetings and could you look could at you some other on, options. Connie, could you make sure that's on the <coughs> utility board for the next mm -hmm. meeting? Would the property owners have a copy of that old harmless or? I mean, Pat, you're one of the property owners, too, or Dennis, or... We were never seen in the We were contacted, and they wanted to redo them because they were in bad shape. And that was a nice set. I don't think there was attorneys that's involved. Not, yeah, that's not name my grievance either. There wasn't attorneys involved. It was just little written notes, hand notes. No, and no. That's just... That's just oh. Oh. Any questions? I got. It was a private contract. That. You know, you know, right. my, what might be a good idea is to turn them off <laughs> before something does happen. Well, Get their hooks straight to poles. Then I'm sure our utility people can go up, turn them off, and then we can figure out uh, what we're going to do. The city utilities, uh, how we're going to get them down. But if they're dangerous right now. They should be turned off. Well, it'd have to be the utility board to make that decision.
Uh, okay, well, I'm just Main before Street. we get into well, it, <clears throat> I don't know who's on the agenda. Should we have Main Street? Next meeting. Just turn them off. You can make a recommendation to the utility board if you want. Make a motion with a recommendation. I make. A, you mean here? Yeah. I make a motion that uh, to that we the redevelopment uh, go to the utility board and say. You know, these should be turned off. If they're hooked directly to if the city. If they're hooked directly to the city. Have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'd second that, but I think, as he said, there's I, some plugged in the... So, uh, some are working, and I think if I was the property owner and you came out and told me you're just going to take some lights off my building, which I, I may similarly own, I might want to ask you what you're doing. Hey, hey John, this keeps going... going and plugging them? Turn the power off. Okay. If this keeps going city, around, you know, yeah. power, if agree. something happens, oh. we're liable. I agree. But the people who own the building they still want them on they only be turned off if they're on city power situation. if they're not city power then they'd be the owner's responsibility right Carl? if the city had anything to do at all lights power to them in any way shape or form the extension cords the timers or anything i highly suggest they get unplugged those extension cords should never have been there from day one so that you're, if we have anything to do with it, anything, ours should be. The, uh, if he want, if the building owner wants to reroute, <coughs> plug his lights back in after we got them, we're cleared. That's his business. But if we had anything at all to do with it, connected from power, if it doesn't mean any more, if we supplied the plug, he can plug it in anywhere he wants after that. We have a motion on the floor in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And also, if the minutes could reflect Carl's recommendation to the utility board. I think we got a stitching cord hanging out the end of our building. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. What they uh, were saying. See, Olin's going to be busy. <laughs> Before you go to the approval of claims, um, I just want to make sure you guys are okay with Mr. Lawrence signing this real uh, the thing on the 517 Euphemia. It was that I don't think that was part of the vote. I might want to make a motion that I can sign the cell documents of 517 Euphemia Street. So moved. Second. First and second. All in favor? Right. Mm -hmm. Thank motion you. Carried. Any other old business? We'll move on to approval of claims once properly certified. Mike, I, I have something. Uh, we don't, behind Kroger's down there, you know that property we yeah. used to own the between Link, Linkmeyer property that between Kroger's. Down. I drove down there. Somebody's dumping down there, dumping asphalt. Uh, they're digging uh, topsoil out also, but there's uh, ice and there's rebar concrete. Or uh, I don't know if you're location are you behind Kroger's, the new Kroger's. The new Kroger. All the way, you know, there's a little side, the old boat dock road. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of piles. Uh, I thought we owned it, but we don't. Uh, there's all kinds of piles of asphalt. Can you dump rebar concrete in there? That's private property. I don't know if they have a fills permit well, or not. Yeah, and, and here's, here's what it is. Well, directly behind them. That's inside the city limits, and there's, there's, they're dumping things down there. But there's nothing the city can say or do to stop them from dumping 
these materials down in. Are you concerned with the materials, or is there a hazard, danger hazard? Or? I don't know. Just as a concerned citizen. Right, say uh, like rebar. Just as it's a beautiful area there, but now there's rebar, there's concrete, there's uh, uh, they're taking soil out, but they're also dumping asphalt down in there, and. Maybe it's just, a, I don't know if this is the play. I thought we owned it. We don't. Uh, just as a concerned citizen. This is an eyesore. I don't know who, no. Well, for 100 years from now, somebody's probably going to build something, bring it up to level, you know, above flood. But <coughs> is it now our, our responsibility to, you know, say something now? You know, and say, hey, don't dump any more rebar. Don't dump any more asphalt down here. And those two roads, the in and the out, there used to be great big concrete. Thing. They've been pushed aside. So anyone can go down there now and dump whatever they want down in there. I think it's actually been the property dumping. But we don't, you don't want to dump going down to our boat club, boat dock, you know. But it's all construction material. I think you're concerned because it's an ISO. No, uh, isn't it against the law to have in a floodplain to dump dump asphalt? Asphalt, I don't know. Because I mean, yeah, of the chemicals? Be. I don't Washing into the water, water stream. Yeah, yeah, into the... There, no, no, what, what there is against the law is anything with the normal high water mark. That is uh, normal high water mark. If not, let me... That ain't about the hot water mark. We wouldn't have been allowed to put asphalt parking in there. Okay. In fact, that's why it had to be concrete on the ramps. We couldn't put asphalt there. It's uh, seven feet above what the pool is. Pre-border. That you have to have, not have asphalt within that seven foot. Well, area. didn't we just okay the runoff water to give that to the uh, two meetings ago? Aurora. The oh, Aurora uh, aquifer. Or Sanitary. Uh, but the water runs right by the. Uh, anyway, it's. That was for a sanitary. Sewer, is, I think you're talking. is rebar considered a normal filling substance? Or can anybody dump rebar in their yard? Or? Well, you're, uh, you're allowed to have a certain percentage of mixed materials in there. Now, uh, would uh, GEO kick it out if it's. No. Mm -hmm. Abundant, yeah. But that's going to be up to the technical firm now. What percentage they're going to kick it out on when they need it? Eight hundred. Well, my point, Mike, is right. if we can stop it now, don't yeah. wait a hundred years until they. Well, you can't do it because somebody dumped rebar in here and asphalt. I but my. Nothing illegal. I don't see how you can stop it. Okay. Yeah, they do have a plan and they do have whole day grading excavated fields. Okay. My question is how do we get that guy in the hill to clean up his boulders by BP, but we can't get this cleaned up with rebar in it? If that was considered rubbish or whatever. and he had. I think we got. I agree with. I think we got the eyesore there all summer for people going to the boat talks. Mike, are getting bigger. Mike, I think we got the same problem down there at Kroger's. We spend a lot of money to try to keep the town and trimmed and plants and everything. And they built that gas station and right across the street they had all their spools and piles of dirt and stuff. But anything we can do about that? That looks like crap. We are I brought that up several times to individuals, and I, I just thought, man, they got this nice station, and, but everything that was left, they just drove across the street. It looks like crap. We, we are addressing that. We are. 
we've had issues Thank you. down there, don't we? Motion to adjourn. Still went. <laughs> a motion on the floor, second. That's it. Second. <laughs> second. <laughs> we have a second? Second. second. First and <laughs> Let's stay second. Let's stay. On favor. Let's right. stay. Both. Motion carried. I'll wait on that. Uh, you can put a sign in these, but I'm not do anything with it until I get the other thing else. Crazy is that sign. Uh, Hello, guys. You were cheering up a little bit. Okay. Good bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so you, you don't want any kind of title yeah. work, so okay. really. Yeah, I don't think it'll be the last I see. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and give you this is the original. Have Reggie's Reggie sign it. Get back to me. All right, sir. Head, do you? Yep. Yep. And then I mean I'll go ahead and so you don't have to come back down, but I'm not gonna do anything with it until. Oh no 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 no! Never.